What's up Nightwalkers? Today I'm going over the Wilcox binocular bridge system. This bridge has been available for quite some time now. However, it seems like a lot of guys are still pretty confused as to the different parts and pieces and trying to figure out what all that they need to order to get this uh, to work out for their setup. So I'm just gonna break it down for you guys real quick. The Wilcox bridge is unique compared to the other ones out there because it's completely modular. So what you're looking at right here are three parts. You've got this uh, dovetail folding arm, you know, it's got a dovetail interface. You've got the center base section, and then you have another folding arm. Uh, this one's for a mum, a mum rail, a device with, you know, for devices with mum rails. And so what's unique about it is you can get the, uh, the center section in dovetail. I mean, this is basically all you're looking at right here. This is the center section, this is the dovetail, uh, but it's also available with the bayonet interface. And so what's kind of cool about that is let's say, you know, you, you've got a, uh, a Rhino, Rhino 2, Wilcox G11, whatever the case is, you know, so you have a, a bayonet interface helmet mount and you want to um, bridge devices together, you know, whether it's two PVS 14s, whatever the case is, and you don't want to spend money on a, on a dovetail helmet mount. Well, you can just buy this thing with the bayonet interface. And then later on, if you decide to get a dovetail mount like a G24, all you got to do is swap this part out right here and you know, transfer the arms over and then you're good to go. And on this folding arm, or actually on both of them, you got this thumb wheel and all this does, it's attached to the screw. And this is basically how you, you know, attach and detach the folding arms to the center base section. All right, so here's the bridge broken down. And now one thing that throws guys for a loop is that the folding arms, you know, they're not listed or they're not, they don't have different part numbers for left and right. And that's because the arms are completely reversible. And so I'll just kind of show you how that works out. So here's your center base section, the dovetail, the way it goes into the mount, your head's gonna be right here. So this is your right eye arm, this is your left eye arm. So let's say you wanna swap them over, you know, cause this is the dovetail, that's a mum. You wanna put the devices on different eyes. The way you do it is all you do is you take it. And now this, uh, this hinge, there's no, there's no stop point on it. So all you do is you just fold it all the way over and now that's your left eye. Same thing with this one. You just fold it all the way over, and now that's your uh, that's your right eye. Now, when it comes to which bridge to purchase, there's two different ways to do it. You know, there, there's top level part numbers that have um, all the components in that top level part number, and so that that'll consist of the center base section and then the two arms that come with it. The most common one is going to be two dovetail folding arms with the center base section being a dovetail. Uh, there's other ones out there, uh, but the other way you could do it is you can actually all the cart purchase the different components and put together your own bridge. So for example, like on the TVC website, you can buy these, uh, these folding arms individually and then, uh, and then buy the center base section individually as well. So this particular configuration, um, I, you know, I put this together to attach a FLIR breech because it has a mum rail and then to run a PVS 14 using the, the Wilcox binocular bridge J arm. So that's what this setup is, uh, is meant for. And here's the different part numbers. So there's your, your mum arm part number, and this would be for the mum, the mum folding arm. And then here's your dovetail part number. And it says Skeeter on it. However, you know, this will work with anything that has a dovetail really. Uh, the position of it, you can't change, you know, um, the, the fore and aft, you know, distance or, you know, place where the dovetail goes. However, with the, with the Wilcox uh, binocular bridge J arm, it does position it the right way. And so there's your different part numbers. And then here's your center base section part number. Uh, that's the dovetail. Now, something I got to point out, because this is really important, is Wilcox has three different J-arms. So you've got this binocular bridge J-arm, and then there's two other J-arms that are meant uh, to attach a PVS-14 to like a G24 mount. And so uh, it's very critical that if you purchase you know, the J-arm for the bridge, uh, this is the one that you want right here. There's the part number. And the reason why is, you know, with the bridge, so here's your bridge, here's how it goes to your G24 mount. And then if you're gonna attach this, you know, it goes in here and you can see the, uh, you can see the spacing of it all, right? So if you were to take the, uh, the PVS-14 arm that's meant for just going on a PVS-14 to that, um, it's going to be, at a, a, it's going to put it way too far in, you know what I mean? In terms of how it goes. And so it's really critical that you get the right one and then vice versa. You know, if you were to buy this arm as the wrong one and try to attach your PVS 14, it's not going to be far enough out, you know, to go to your eye. All right. So I'm going to run you through attaching all this stuff together. And I'm, I'm going to start off with uh, the breach, you know, with the mum side. 
So on, on the mum rails, you got this gap in between the two rail sections. And then on the, uh, on the mum folding arm, you got the same gap. And then the way this thing works is you basically extend out this bar. You can see it right there. See it coming in and out. And that's how you lock it into the rail. Now, the problem you have is this is your, that's pretty much where it's going to be, you know, if you use it that way for your eye spacing. So you don't have a way to adjust the fore and aft adjustment on it. Um, so if you need it closer to your eye, further away, um, one option you could do is you could just put it where you want, you know, and this slides into the rail, you know, or the rail, I should say, slides into that interface. Uh, so anyways, if you position it somewhere else, um, what you could do is, is extend that and just kind of squeeze the shit out of it on the, on the device or on the device's rail and keep it there. However, it's not going to be as secure because it's not, you know, inside that, that section there to where it physically can't move. You see this knob, then you got this bar. So this is actually an IPD stop, you know, an interpupillary distance stop. And the way this thing works, okay, so right now I have it loose, right? And I have, actually, it's not loose. <laughs> there we go. So I got it loose and I'm going to move it all the way out. So I could basically put the put the device where I, wherever I want because the way you set your IPD spacing is by articulating it. So that's how you get it lined up. Uh, but if you want the ability to just put it back and not have to not have to mess with it, you basically just set where you want the bar to go, and then you just lock it down. And then now when you bring the device down, as you can see, it's going to stop where you want it to. The way that you set your IPD spacing with the dovetail folding arm is just by turning these knobs right here, which just kind of moves the screw, and that's how you move it left to right, you know, to line it up for your eyes. The hinge doesn't have any uh, lockout in terms of you don't need like a button or nothing like that to release it like you do for a KVC. However, you will hear it click, you know, once it gets in these positions here, it's probably with a little detent or something, uh, but it's all forced to overcome. So you don't have to have a button or nothing. You just move it by force. All right. So when it comes to attaching the, uh, the arm to the PVS 14, it's pretty basic. I mean, here's your J arm camera thread screw. Now, if you look at it, you got these two, uh, these two tabs sticking out. The, so those just lo help locate it on either side of this part of the housing. You got your camera thread screws, electrical contacts that make contact here so that the cable can do its magic. Now, when you put it in there, you just got to obviously make sure that those tabs are in the right spot. And then uh, the thread's in there. Uh, and then you could use a coin, screwdriver, multi-tool, whatever. And it's then, then at that point, it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to screw it in there. And now once it's in there, You'll see the dovetails position in the right area. However, you know, there's still a possibility for some movement. And the way they rectify that is if you look here, there's a set screw uh, just underneath this section right there. And by tightening that up, it's going to help locate this thing uh, properly on the housing. So you're not going to get that, that rotation. The cable has this end on it. So that's a magnet. And where it goes is inside this part. So this is, a, this is actually on the J-arm. And so you just take it. And you just pop it in there to the hole. Now putting it like this is actually just storing it. You know, this thing's called the uh, the storage cup. And it's just a place for you to have somewhere to put this thing to get it out of the way if you're not going to use it. Because uh, the way this thing operates is just like the, the same deal that comes with the Wilcox Auto Off J-Arm. And the way this thing functions, it's got a magnet. They give you a magnetic plug that you then press inside here on the, on the button on the Wilcox mount. And that's how it makes contact. And that's how it attaches. So basically, whenever you're going to push the button to stow your device, that's how you activate the button to turn it off. Now, something I have to point out with these J arms for the binocular bridge is that there's uh, there's no left and right. And the reason that's important is when you have it inside the bridge, uh, the battery compartment's always going to be to your left. So here it is on your head. There's the battery compartment. And then depending on the size of the other device that you're that you're trying to bridge. You know, you could run into a, a clearance problem where the battery compartment is contacting the other device. And so in my opinion, I think the best way to run uh, the Wilcox setup is to run the, uh, the 14 with the, with the J-arm on your left eye because the battery compartment's not in the way and then you got more room for the other device right here. And so that way you won't have any interference problems with it. To wrap up this video, I really like this bridge a lot for its modularity. Now, when it comes to using the device in this type of a, of a configuration, um, it's, it's best suited to running the devices individually. And, you know, ultimately that is probably the best way to do it. And that's how most people are going to do it. Is they're they're going to use the devices individually. So if you want thermal, you use thermal. You want night vision, you use night vision. And so that's the best way to do it. Depending on the device that you're going to use with the PVS-14, you know, you might have some, some issues in terms of the eyepieces being lined up correctly. So in this case with the breach in the 14, as you can see, uh, they don't line up exact. Now it's still usable um, as long as I'm using each device individually. I just have to like move my helmet or adjust the mount, you know, for whichever device I want to look through. 
Now, one thing to point out that's really cool about this, uh, this binocular bridge is if you get it with the two dovetail folding arms, um, you could use other dovetail accessories that are non-Wilcox to attach them to this bridge. And so, you know, the number one example of that is, uh, you know, KVC universal bridges and those in the OSS shoes and K-clips are really popular, but they're really hard to get right now. So let's say if you had the OSS shoes and the K-clips and you, you can't find the universal bridge from KVC, you know, you can purchase this Wilcox bridge with the two dovetail arms and you can interface those um, KVC accessories in these dovetail shoes. Um, I've tested it, it works. You just have to adjust the, um, the tooth on the KVC dovetails and then they'll fit inside. Uh, so this is definitely a good substitute option in place of the KVC Universal Bridge. Uh, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, just hit me up in the comment sections and thanks for watching.